Welcome to the John Freakin' Muir Pod. Lace up those boots and sling on the pack for a romp through trails, short and long. With your host and renaissance man, Doc, it's time to embrace the suck. Welcome back to another week on the Trail Dirt Bags and Hiker Trash. I'm Doc, and this is the John Freakin' Muir Pod. Let's start off with a reminder. If you are enjoying the podcast, take just a minute, help us out, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. And if you're not enjoying the pod, well, just go ahead and keep that to yourself. All right, let's get to this week's guest, a repeat customer from season four, episode 20, which aired last October. I can't believe it's been that long. And if you are frantically checking your JFM pod episode list, then you know it's my pleasure to welcome back to the pod, Triple Crowner, Cal Dobbs. How's it going, Cal? It's going great. Thanks for asking. Happy to be here. Great to have you on. And I, I'm just loving the decor of the room that you're in right now. Just that that <laughs> background is is amazing. You know, you're the only one. <laughs> Good old <laughs> Motel Six, right? We travel. We travel cheap here in the outdoor community. That's right. That's right. Make the dollar stretch. That's right. Okay. Now, Cal, I know you. You are a triple crowner, and so mm-hmm. I know that you have picked up a. A trail name along the way. You want to remind our our listeners of your trail name and how you got it? Yeah, my trail name is Starburst. <clears throat> I picked that up in the Sierras during a backpacking, a COVID backpacking trip. Um, but to be honest, not many folks are calling me Starburst these days because I'm doing a different sort of trail these days where trail names are not quite as popular. <laughs> I, I think, you know, we should take the trail name concept and apply it to all walks of life. I you know, agree. So, something funny happens at work. Hey, you you are now sits on fork. Uh, That's if, right. If, some, if something happens on the bus, if something happens, you know, wherever you are, I, I think that particular crowd of people that you're with at that time, that becomes your your community and you, you have to wear that trail name when you're with them. That's right. I feel like you're, it's a way better a kind of summary of someone's identity, the interesting things that happen in their life than, you know, a name that we didn't get to pick ourselves, right? I mean, it tells you something about someone. So I totally agree. Right. You seem to have some visitors in the background. Yes. Those what are is my going dogs. on back there? Well, one of them actually is a double crowner, my uh, Black Lab Truman. Those who follow me know that I hike with my uh, dog Truman. He's quite the quite the hiker. He did the CDT with me and he did the PCT with me. And then Cooper is the other one. She's done the Colorado trail, but that's about all she can handle. Okay. Now Truman, are you a big Harry S. Truman fan or a Truman, the the, the movie with Jim Carrey or neither? Neither. Actually, if you're familiar with the director, David Lynch, he did a show called Twin Peaks and the two main characters are Special Agent Cooper and Sheriff Truman. So that's what oh, my dogs are named after. Best I friend. should, I Best should have, I should have known that. I am a big Twin Twin Peaks fan. In fact, Yay. my youngest, my youngest graduated college, and when our kids graduate college, we gift them a trip somewhere in which we go with them. You know, it's, it's part of the way that I can, I can enjoy the gift that I'm giving. That's right. And so we took them to, took her and her boyfriend to Seattle and then to Vancouver. And while we were in Seattle. We took a trip, a day trip out to Snoqualmie Falls, which is yeah. mm-hmm. the, the waterfalls in the opening credits of Twin Peaks. That's really cool. That's a great, that's a great trip. I was, I was looking for Agent Cooper left and right behind all the trees, but uh, I, I did not find him. You gotta, you gotta find, if you're going to find Cooper, you gotta find Bob. And I don't know if you want that. So <laughs> <laughs> for all the Twin Peaks fit, peak fans out there, you know what we mean. <laughs> So are you just going by Cal on this podcast? You don't have a a, a running name? No, I don't. And I'm happy to, to talk a little bit about, you know, what I'm doing and why I'm not going by my trail name necessarily. Okay. And we will get to that for sure. But you are a, a repeat customer. So you know the structure of the show. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, at the end of each episode, we've got a segment called the Pro Tip Inside of the Week. That's where you're going to take some of your wisdom from the mistakes that you've made on the road or on the trail. And you're gonna you're gonna share how you became a little bit wiser and how our our listeners can make their next outdoor experience even better. So don't be surprised when we get there. 
Yes, I love that segment. It humbles all of us. That's, that's right. All right. The Must Bring Gear Review. Okay, you are also familiar with this one. This is the Must Bring Gear Review sponsored by the Ultralight Backpacking Gear Company, Six Moon Designs. And here's the way it works. If you were to let a stranger pack your bag with pretty much generic gear for a multi-state run, what is the one specific piece of gear you would insist on being packed? And if you've got a particular brand for that specific piece of gear, even better. So what do you have to have out there on the road with you, Cal? Mm, well, I'll tell you, my answer is different this time around for a long ultra marathon run as you know, different from what it would be for backpacking. In my two weeks of being out here on this project, I'll tell you the number one thing I've learned is more essential than anything is sunscreen. Y'all could see me, I'm bright as a cherry red tomato. And it's, you know, I think when you're backpacking, you have that uh, shade cover of the foliage. A lot of the time you can get away without it sometimes, but not out here on the open road when you're running, it is full sun exposure all, all hours of the day. Not a lot of shade out there on the road between LA and Phoenix. <laughs> As you might imagine, there is not even one leaf worth. <laughs> well, you know, Six Moon Designs, I think one of their specialties is the the uh, umbrella. I'm actually happy that you mentioned that because they did send me, Six Moon Designs sent me their running, their ultralight running umbrella, and I ought to start using it. The re I was saving it for the peak summer heat because it hasn't actually been that hot, but the sun is deceptive like that. It'll still get you even if you're feeling kind of chilly. So I ought to start using it. I'll definitely uh -huh. be using it when I pass through Texas. Okay, big shout out to Whitney LaRufa, aka All Good at Six Moon Designs and the Ultralight Running Umbrella. Yeah, we want we want pictures of you using that umbrella, Cal. Oh, you got them. That'll that'll be happening for sure. Okay. It's the hiking pole. Now, Cal, you've been through the hiking pole before. I think I gave you a score. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember? Yeah, what the I score think is? I did pretty good. I think I did pretty good. I don't think I'm that crazy, you know. <laughs> Were you in the in the fifties, the sixties, the seventies? Any any recollection? I think I don't remember. Wait, is it a higher score is better or worse? Higher score is more sane. Yes, I believe I was in the fifties or sixties. I'm flipping through my book here, but I think I like to think of myself as a relatively sane backpacker. I, think I like season, to have fun out there. I think season four was in another notebook, so it, it, I'll have to take your word for it. I can't fact check you in real time. I know. Well, I'll try to answer him, answer answer it the same, and then we'll know for sure. Well, I'm not going to give you a chance to answer it. Much. I'm not going to give you a chance to answer it the same because we're going to go to the question question set B. We're not going to use oh. the set A questions. I have a whole Perfect. other batch of questions for you. This has nothing to do with hiking. It has nothing to do with running. All These right. are some of the big issues that our society struggles with day by day. We could probably devote an entire episode, maybe a season to just one of these topics. Yeah. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm excited. Are you, are you nervous? A little. Yeah. Are you opinionate, opinionated? You know, I like to be as opinionated as I can be without being closed minded. I like to, I'm an educator. I'm a teacher outside of all the outdoor stuff. And so I like to think I'm relatively open-minded and if there's something I don't know, I'm not afraid to admit it. Okay. All right. Now, as always, uh, there's an automatic 25 points that come off the top because you're a triple crowner. And that, that you, says something to your, you know, your your level of sanity. So already minus 25. True. <laughs> right. Shoot, I'll have to gain it back. I, I may I may even I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I may even deduct, deduct some points for running across the country. Without I something. feel like it's deserved. It's pretty, yeah. pretty insane. OK. All right. Question number one. Here we go. As always, make sure you explain your answer. You have to show yeah. your work on this. You're, you're right. your teacher. Show your work. That's right. Okay. All right. Question number one. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Absolutely not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is Strong that opinion is right off the bat. I didn't, know, I didn't know if you were going to stop. I didn't know if you were going to stop it. Absolutely. Or if there was something coming coming after that. And you, you just kept, you blew right through that. Absolutely oh, not. Absolutely not. No, it's, that is truly insane. And why is that? I mean, I'm a fan of salty sweet. That's my favorite flavor combo, but it's a texture thing. You can't have the amount of moisture in a pineapple on something as pure and beautiful as a crusty, salty, cheesy pizza. I mean, it's just 
nasty. Okay. Strong feelings already right off the bat. <laughs> I thought you were going to keep an open mind, but it, obviously not. I guess I'm not as, I guess we all have room to grow, you know? <laughs> all right. Question number two. Do you roll your toilet paper over or under? Definitely over. It's got to be over. And I'm very judgmental. I'm now realizing of people who put it on the other way. Probably if somebody goes in before me and does it the wrong way, I'm going to be passive aggressive the rest of the day. You, would you Would you change it? Absolutely. I'm very much a, a fixer type of person. If, if someone doesn't do something right, I got to go in and do it right, I guess, you know, it's part of and being would, a teacher. <laughs> would you be bold enough to tell the person that you changed it and why, why that's the correct way to do it? I think I would opt for passive aggression and just let them try to figure out what they had done wrong. You know what I mean? I love a good, good dose of that. Keeps it interesting. Keeps it spicy. Passive passive aggression is, is the best type, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Question number three. I think I already know the answer to this cats or dogs. Oh, absolutely. Dogs. I mean, I respect cats, but have you ever noticed how cat owners, they'll tell you they have a cat. You'll say, wow, where is it? And they're like, oh, I don't know. I haven't seen it for weeks. What's the point of having a cat? That's what I would like to know. It doesn't really seem like there's a point. Might as well get a plant. You'd see the plant more often than you'd see the cat. But my dogs, they're my best friends and they take care of me. On this run across America and on my triple crown trails, I have Truman nobody's screwing with me out there. Not an animal, not a person, nothing. I would feel less confident if I had a cat. Yeah. Dogs, unconditional love. Cats, exactly. they're like, they're like F you. you yeah. Know? They're very <laughs> aloof. And I, I identify in a lot of ways. I've been described as a golden retriever. I'm very, you know, playful and friendly and I'm, I respect cats. They're very smart. They're very spiritual beings. They definitely know something that we don't know, but I just feel like there's no fun. I like fun. Yeah. That's yeah, why we're take, in the outdoors. They, they could take you or leave you. I know that when I'm watching my grand dogs and I, I go out uh, maybe to the mailbox and I come back, it's like I've been gone for 48 hours. I mean, the, the, mm -hmm. you know, they're so excited that actually I came back in through the door and they, you know, just lose themselves. So yes, yes. There's a lot more of a connection with dogs mm -hmm. and I appreciate that. Okay. Question number four, do you use the Oxford comma? Yes, I do. And Google tries to change that and I refuse. Yeah. I, I think society is on the verge of losing the Oxford comma. They want they want to change it for some reason. I don't know. I, I think it it, it is kind of one of the, uh, the the cornerstones of our society. I agree. It's just logical. You have a list. You need a comma. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Of course. Well, we said. know what's up. <laughs> All right. Question number. I think we're on five. Question five is a hot dog a sandwich. This is a very interesting philosophical query that you bring to us today. And I would argue that it is just from the fact that even if you argue that it's an open face sandwich, because there's not two slices, that's what it is. It's open face sandwich, sandwich. There's no other way to describe it. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, it, this is a strong divider in our society. I think you could break up the state, the, the, the U S the world, maybe, I don't know, is well, what's the alternative? those who say it, it's not a sandwich and those <clears throat> who say it is a sandwich. But what's the alternative? You have a piece of meat between two pieces of bread. That's the definition of a sandwich. There's no debate. I, we're just right. I've so, heard all kinds of things, you know, people saying, well, it, the bread is hinged. Well, I mean, there are well, other it's an open face sandwich. Have, yeah. Open face hoagie. I mean, th those are, those are hinged pieces of bread. Exactly. Well, it's, so it's, much. it's tubular meat was, was a, I didn't know that was, that was a qualifier. I don't think it is. You know, I think there's a lot of folks that seek to divide us with all sorts of twisted and silly logic. And I think it's important that we stay one step ahead of them. Don't let us divide. Don't let them divide us on this front. You know? Nice. I see where you're going with that. That's a, that's a nice metaphor. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
Question number six, Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. Absolutely. You know, I've never really gotten into YouTube. What I will say on YouTube's behalf is that um, it's the democratization of media. And I think that's very important. Um, Anyone can post anything on YouTube. And while there are certainly, you know, as a society, there are dangers to anyone being able to say anything that's an opinion and call it a fact. If you try to police that, you're bordering on censorship. So you have to practice these principles, you know, in all of our affairs and you don't get to cherry pick who gets freedom of speech and who doesn't. So I do appreciate YouTube for that reason. It's the democratization of media. It's equal opportunity for anyone who wants to share anything. And I think that that is uh, a very beautiful transformation or very beautiful resource our society has. But in terms of entertainment, there, there it was. I was waiting. I was waiting for the butt. I, I anticipated yeah. there was a big butt coming and, and there it was. It's but about it's, it's having about said all that, mm-hmm. but okay. but in terms of entertainment, I would rather I would rather watch the professionals do it. I think they do a better job for the most part. But I appreciate that YouTube exists. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of storytellers on YouTube. There's a lot of yeah. uh, kind of reality type TV on on YouTube. But I think I think Netflix does it better. Yes, they certainly have a bigger budget than a lot of independent creators. True. True. Yeah. What what is in your Netflix uh, menu these days? You know, I really need to prioritize watching more stuff just because it's an important part of sanity and mental health and wellness and the sort of mental sustainability of a, of the kind of project I'm doing. Um, I think the last things that I watched maybe were not on Netflix. I know I watched White Lotus, which is on HBO, which I very much enjoyed. I think the last thing I loved on Netflix was Heartstopper, which is a, if for anyone out there who doesn't know, it's an absolute must watch. It is a very cute uh, show based on a comic. So, and they incorporate a lot of the comic book elements of illustration into it. So it's very whimsical. It's about um, two high school boys kind of figuring themselves out. One, they go to an all boys high school. One is out as gay and the other one is like the star rugby player. And they have this very pure and beautiful friendship where by one of the boys, Charlie, he's out as gay. The other boy, Nick, starts to really invite him to explore his own identity, his own, um, you know, the community that he finds or there or actually lacks on the rugby team where everyone is very like, macho don't talk about your feelings it it brings out this sensitive side of nick the jock and i really identify with that as a jock myself that you know we should be able to inhabit the uh, and experience the whole range of the human condition and so it's just a very cute very wholesome um sweet little story about these boys based on a comic and it was incredibly popular for good reason it was called heart stoppers Heartstopper, yes. Okay, Heartstopper. Okay, got it. Yes, got it. strong recommendation for that one. All right. Well, I I am watching currently with with Mrs. Doc. We're watching. We just started last night. Jay-Z, Daisy Jones and the Six, which mm, seems to be my... really good, really good. Yeah. Uh, in terms of reality show, the family watched Physical One Hundred a few weeks ago. I agree with it. So it is this. Uh, I think it's South Korean. Mm-hmm. I think. I think. I think it's South Korean. Uh, reality show where they start out with a hundred people, uh, both uh, male, female, and they're, they're these competitions, feats of strength. And it's all about, you know, w- which body type, I think mm-hmm. that's the premise is which body type is uh, equipped best to survive these different tests. And it, it, it's almost like a real life squid game. Yeah, I yeah, guess but, no, but so. nobody that's dies, great. but nobody dies. Okay, good. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say. <laughs> so that was pretty that entertaining. That sounds really cool. Especially for the think, athlete and all of us. Yeah. But I think the best show that I've seen that really struck a, a nerve with me on Netflix, and I, and I was an early adopter. I watched this before it got all the hype. And now I've seen headlines and, and stories about this is, the, you know, you should really watch this. It's a mind bender. It is a series called, three seasons called Dark. Mm. Have you seen that? No. It's kind of a time traveling, it's a mm. small town on, uh, I think it's in Germany. 
Okay. And it's a it's a it's a foreign series, but it is it'll just blow your mind Whoa. because it has a large cast of characters and they're all interrelated. I literally needed to download an image of like a a, a character tree of who was who was related to who, right, and who was doing right. what. But it was oh my so gosh. so well done. So if you haven't okay. seen Dark, check it out. Okay, I'll definitely take a look. Okay. Question number seven, last question in the hiking poll. Question number seven, in the case of a zombie apocalypse, what would be your most useful skill? Mm, <clears throat> this is an interesting question to ask a through hiker because a lot of my non-hiker friends, they always tell me in the case of a zombie apocalypse, I want you on my team. And I was like, are you kidding? I don't know how to do shit. I walk into a town and I get my McDonald's and then I pack up my pop tarts for se seven days and I get water in the rivers. Like I, I don't have survival skills, quite frankly. Um, and they're like, Oh, that's not true. I bet you know more than you think. Um, so maybe that is true. Maybe I know more than I think. Um, but the question maybe, was, what, do you think maybe they, they expect you to kind of lead them out into the wilderness and show them how to filter water and, and dig cat holes, uh, while you are evading the, the zombies? Yes, that might be what it is. And was your question, what's the one thing I would bring? What is your most useful skill in case of a my most apocalypse? useful skill? Okay. Yeah. Well, you've actually led me to my answer. I would say my most useful skill is having a very calm but strong disposition and presence. I am, I have been told that I'm a natural leader. I'm very good in a crisis. I'm very competent. Um, you know, as a teacher, I'm always leading kids around during fire drills, keeping them organized, keeping people calm. Um, I'm good at talking people through things um, that are hard, even if I'm scared. So I think I would like to believe that my best attribute in the event of a zombie apocalypse would be the sort of orchestrating everyone else's skills. I can make a spreadsheet, who knows how to do what, who's starting the fire, okay, you go do this, and just, you know, giving and taking orders. So I, I feel like maybe people would want me on their team, but not because I have any useful survival skill, but because I can figure out who knows what other things. Fair point. And I'm, I'm enjoying watching uh, Truman and Cooper playing on the bed in the background there, just like my grand dogs do. They, they yep. get after it and play with each other and antagonize one another. Yeah, it's good stuff. Well, they just came from the vet, so they probably have a lot of nervous pent up energy. So, <laughs> okay. If you're not watching this on YouTube, hit pause, hit pause and, and turn on YouTube to see Truman yeah. and Cooper going at it. All right. That's right. We'll get them a ball going here. <laughs> so Cal, we've already established now that you, you've been told that you're a golden retriever. Uh, we also uh, now established that people tell you that you're a natural leader. So, I mean, it's, I, I'm keeping a list of the things that, that you've been told that you are. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep referring to that. All right. Let me, let me do some math here. I got to put your answers through the John Freaky Mirpod algorithm. Oh Bear boy. With me for a second. I need to carry the three. We're going to nervous. We're going to divide by pi. And multiply by by uh, root three, and then we're going to adjust for the temperature, the heat index. Walking or running on an asphalt road in the middle of the Mojave Desert uh, on a on a cross country run, and I come up with a score of sixty three. That's 63. a good one, right? Yeah, that's pretty solid. I mean, that's considering insane. you started okay. at seventy five, I mean, you only lost twelve points. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Solid. I would call that successful, at least for me. Solid. All right. Hey, before we get too far across the country, let's back up a little bit. Uh, let's hear about your background. Remind us all where you grew up and how you got involved in, in through hiking. Because we're going to talk a little bit about your triple crown, um, how you got yes. involved through hiking and running. So absolutely. <clears throat> well, my name is Cal and I was born and raised uh, real close to the ocean in Venice, California and Los Angeles. Um, and growing up in a city in a concrete jungle, I didn't have much exposure to nature. So a lot of my early activity was running. I became a competitive runner very young. I went on to run in college and then in my young adult life before the pandemic, competitive ultra marathoner. But I was always sort of hungering for 
more endurance activities, right? And I found that the longer the distance got in running, the better I performed. So I was always wondering, you know, what is the ultimate test of endurance? And that's when someone told me about through hiking and I'd never been, <laughs> I'd never been, <laughs> my, my dogs are being very silly. Um, <laughs> I had never um, even been backpacking when I decided to do the Appalachian Trail in 2018. And so, you know, as soon as I learned that there was a crazy group of people that wake up, start walking and don't stop until they go to sleep at night, I thought that's for me, like a crazy person, obviously. And so I did the AT and, you know, the thing that a lot of people say is like, I guess you couldn't get enough. You had to go on and do uh, the other trails. It was actually kind of the opposite. I did not have a good time on the Appalachian Trail. And that's why I came back. I didn't know what the hell I was doing out there. I didn't know how to backpack. I didn't have any of the right stuff. I think my pack maybe was 70 pounds when I started at Springer Mountain. And I just... I, I did make it to Katahdin after a while and I, you know, I went in with a chip on my shoulder. Cause I was like, you know, I'm a, I'm a distance runner. Obviously I can physically do this. And that was true, but there was a lot more to know that I very quickly realized I just didn't know. So that's what really kept me coming back. And I, you know, saved up some money and then I went to the CDT and I thought, I'm going to do it differently this time. You know, I changed out all my gear. I did my research. I I knew a lot from trial and error on the AT. Um, But I thought, you know, I'm going to do bigger miles. I'm going to move through this trail quickly um, and just do a lot of things in a more intentional way. And so I did that. The CDT is still my favorite uh, trail of the Triple Crown trails. I loved my time out there. I loved how remote it was, how... um, wild and beautiful it was. And I was really at the time saving, you know, my home state trail for last being from California. I figure I'll finish my crown in California on the PCT. And that's what I did last year. Now, do you think you're in the minority in, in those triple crowners whose favorite trail is the CDT? I I, I tend to Mm. think that you might be in the minority there. It's possible. It's possible. But I mean, I feel like it speaks for itself. Anyone who's done the CDT knows how grand and just moving and breathtaking the nature out there is. Um, it's it's very different in the West, that's for sure, than in the East. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of people, as you might imagine, who have who hiked a bunch of trails. And if if you're talking to an East Coaster, they tend to live and die by the AT. They swear the AT is the best trail ever. And they'll fight well, you on that if you have a different opinion. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you, when it's all you've got, you got to defend what you've got, even if deep down, you know, it's not as good. You really, you gotta, you gotta Mm -hmm. stick to your guns. So I respect that, but I think we all, we all know what's up. Yeah. And the PC, PC tiers, I mean, they, they, you know, the, the majesty of the Sierras and just the, the different personalities of that trail and the wide openness and remoteness at some places. I mean, they swear PCT is, is the way to go. But I think both of them look at the CD tiers and say, yeah, you guys are, you guys are crazy. That's, that's, it's almost like, you know, you're an educator. So it's like mm-hmm. the high school teachers, they look down at the elementary teachers and say, I don't know how you do it. And the elementary yeah. teachers look at the high school teachers and say, I don't know how you do it. And they that's both good. look at the junior high teachers and say, you guys are crazy. So that's, that's mm-hmm. the CDT right there. That, that's the junior high. That's teacher. right. Yeah. Different animal. That's for sure. Different animal. That's right. Okay. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Cal, we're going to get into what you're doing right now. And I also want to see if you are familiar, since you're a runner, I want to see if you're familiar with one of my, my previous guests. So stay tuned for that. We're going to hear from the advertisers. We'll be right back. And welcome back. We are talking to Cal Dobbs, who is currently calling in from a Motel 6 in Phoenix after having spent the last couple of weeks on the road under the sun just baking. Uh, you haven't gotten a lot tanner, Cal. A lot redder, maybe, but not not no, tanner. Just a little burned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you mentioned that you grew up being a runner. You ran in college. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with the name Rene Mativier? I can't say that I am. It sounds familiar, but I wouldn't know who it was. Okay, she's also a a college athlete. I think she she broke some records. 
Nice. I think she set uh, the world record for, it was a treadmill record where she actually ran, oh. I don't know how many hours on a treadmill, which just sounds torturous to me, but she Girl. was, she was hilarious to talk to. She was, she was very, very funny. Probably and, scored pretty low on the insanity scale for doing yeah, something like that. Well, if it's the insanity scale, she scored high, but it was the That's sanity true. scale. She scored, she scored real low, but she's right. just a, a hoot. Hilarious. So uh, Renee, if you're listening, Hi there. Okay. Let's talk about what you're doing these days, Cal. And we talked about the triple count a little bit. Uh, we got into, you know, CDT is your favorite. I, I've had people tell me that if they had started the triple crown with, with the CDT, that would have been the only trail and they may not yeah. have finished. Yeah. Um, they only persevered because they already had the two other two under their belt and they, they felt the need that they had to. And in fact, I just talked to Nikola Horvat goes mm -hmm. by Tesla who, mm -hmm. You may be familiar with the first documentary that he did called Why Do I Hike? Mm. And it was really about all the positives and what, what you get out of hiking. And he got a lot of criticism for that because they're like, that's not the real truth of the trail. And so he went out to then, he hiked the, the CDT and he was going to show the hardships of a through hike. So he, he actually made a second documentary. I've wow. seen an advanced copy. It's awesome. Um, but the CDT really kicked his butt. And I bet so it'll the do that. trail to talk about the hardships. That's right. But you're off trail now. You're on, you're on the road now. I'm on a road. What do you, what are you doing? What do you, what, how far are you running? Well, I am running from California to Florida, from the Pacific ocean to the Atlantic ocean across 13 States, I believe through the Southwest and the South. Um, and I'm running to fulfill a childhood dream that I had of running across America. But what I didn't know when I had this dream as a child, that it would be for something so much bigger than myself. Uh, I myself am a transgender athlete and I, you know, recently had gender affirming healthcare and gender affirming surgery. And we're seeing this huge um, assault on the human rights of trans people all over the country with 41 out of 50 states introducing over 400 pieces of anti-trans legislation. I mean, this is really an unprecedented attack on such a truly small group of people. I mean, there aren't that many trans people in America. So, um, but it's, Cooper, but it's, uh, it's really, you know, disheartening to watch. And we know that this legislation is being waged on two primary sort of battlefronts, which is the inclusion of trans people in sports and access to gender affirming health care. So for me, as a transgender athlete and someone who needs gender affirming health care, these are very personal things for me. Um, and so I really feel that this run across America has a very beautiful opportunity to be this sort of connective tissue between all of these communities that are being affected by this legislation um, to, you know, really show up and say and be sort of like a beacon of hope, right, that you know, trans people, we're really cool. We do sports. We're really, really good at them. Um, you know, we care about, because the way I see it is it's not a political issue. This is an issue about values. And I think we all have shared values when it really comes down to it. We all care about our family. We care about our kids. We care about our community. We care about taking care of each other. And I think a lot of people who um, are uncomfortable with trans people or don't understand them, it, it really just comes from lack of exposure. So I think if I can show up in these times of fear and ignorance and hate, and I can show up as my, you know, golden retriever self, full of love, full of joy, connecting people um, all over the country, that can really be an antidote you know, to these difficult times. And then, you know, we can connect over those shared values, connect over our shared activities like running and hiking and being in the, being in the outdoors. 
Um, so I'm just really excited to, you know, run from one side of the country to the next, make all sorts of friends, build all sorts of community, um, and just, you know, share the narratives of all the really cool, fun people that I'm interacting with. Very similar to a through hike, you know, you always meet the most interesting people just out there in the woods, you know, and people really want to talk about this stuff I find. And so that's the platform we're building with the run across America. Cal, I've got a lot of questions. You ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So in terms of promotion, what kind of, what kind of media is out there about your run and what kind of feedback have you been getting from folks? Yes. Well, we have a beautiful website that I'm so proud of. It's caldobs.com, C-A-L-D-O-B-B-S.com. And that has all sorts of information about the run, about the route, about our incredible team that is supporting this run. And it also has a lot of information about our projects. Now, we know that when the forward-facing dialogue and rhetoric around trans people in the in this country right now it's all you know on the news you got to wonder well who where are the actual trans people in question there aren't that many media representations out there so we are currently working on a documentary about the run that is going to be yes about me and my run across the country and it's going to be a very fun sort of like Forrest Gump sort of, you know, community where I'm just like hoping to get a crowd behind me. And, um, but we're also going to be interviewing a lot of local members of the LGBTQ community, um, parents of trans kids, people working on this legislation, um, talking about, you know, well, what are your stories of family and community and working with this population? Um, so there's information about the documentary that should be coming out, um, after the run, certainly. So stay tuned. It's, it's going to be a minute to put it together. Um, but in the meantime, in each of the towns that I stop in, I'm doing fundraisers for local LGBTQ groups that are working to support trans youth who are, you know, um, fighting this stuff and, and going, you know, being brought up in this, um, we're do, I'm doing a community run in Phoenix, which is really exciting. So things like that, you can find out about that on the website, as well as my Instagram, which is Cal underscore hikes. Um, I am vlogging the run, which I think probably for a lot of folks on this podcast who want like, what are the details? Like, how many miles are you doing? Like, what's your route? Like, what gear are you using? That's, That's all on YouTube. Like, y'all want to questions, Cal. They're coming. I, I asked yes, yes. All that info's on YouTube. I just posted my latest videos about like the supplements that I'm taking because it's hard to get your nutritional needs met. And that can also be so applicable to a through hike. So, you know, how am I keeping my energy up? How am I physically sustaining the run? That video is up there. Um, I'm putting my gear video up there uh, this week, actually, some videos about my running shoes. And then I also have a Patreon, which is going to be, which is a super important way to directly support the run because any money that I make from my Patreon subscriptions are going directly back into funding the run, the support crew, buying food, that kind of stuff. Um, and that has a lot of exclusive content specifically pertaining to the running part of it, which I know folks might be interested in. Cal, do you mind if we take a minute and just kind of demystify things? I think there may be some people yes. listening who may be unsure of different terms and how this works and what it, what it's all about. Do you have a, a, a condensed version of uh, a discussion on, you know, gender versus sexuality and, and what is transgender? Yes, thank you. I know we talked about this last time and so many folks reached out and, you know, we're very grateful because I think that's really where it starts is that a lot of people have a lot of questions, but they're too scared to ask. And that's because people care and no one wants to say the wrong thing. No one wants to hurt anyone's feelings. For anyone listening, by the way, my website has a lot of great sort of 101 resources of answering all these questions. What is gender? What is non-binary? What is transgender? You know, what are pronouns? All of that is on my website. And I am an I'm a teacher. I love being a resource. So I really want people to feel empowered to reach out and ask your questions. As I say to my students, there's no stupid questions, right? Um, so 
just to break it down, there's everybody has a gender, obviously, right? And so there's transgender and there's cisgender people. And all that means, because you hear people throw those words around, it's like, what do they even mean? Cisgender just means that you identify as the gender that you were assigned at birth. You were born, the doctor says that's a boy, and you grow up and you're like, I'm a boy. You're cisgender. It just means, because cis means same, right? It just means same. You're the same gender you were assigned at birth. Transgender means you identify as a different gender than the one you were assigned at birth. And that's the prefix trans, right? Trans just means different. You know what I mean? So it's like you hear all these words and it's like, oh my God, it's so complicated. It's actually so simple. It just means you you do identify with what you were born as or you identify as something different. Um, and that really speaks to how gender is different than like sex or biology, even though, you know, even human biology is not binary. There's not just sort of two sets of, you know, male or female anatomy. There's also, you know, um, intersex people. There's lots of variability, even, you know, with anyone listening, I'm sure you've gotten a blood test where you've gotten, you know, maybe your uh, testosterone levels checked or your estrogen levels checked. And every Everybody has different levels, right? I mean, we are as diverse as of a species as like dog breeds, right? No dog breed. There's not two dog breeds, right? We're all, we're, we have that biodiversity too. Um, so transgender just means that someone identifies as something different, right? Maybe they were assigned male at birth, but then they start to grow up and they say, no, I'm a girl, actually. Then that person identifies as a woman or as a girl. Um, and so the most important thing, I think, for people to know, because I think there's a lot of confusion around like, you know, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to offend anyone. It's really no different than you would with anybody else. It's just simply calling people what they want to be called. And it's always okay to ask if you don't know but what someone's gender is by looking at them. It's okay to ask like, hey, what pronouns do you use? And they'll say, oh, I use he, him. Thank you for asking. And then you're like, oh, okay, this person uses he, him pronouns. So then you can say, oh, he's helping me at the register. Oh, you know, she wants a cup of coffee or something like that. Um, so it's just referring to people how they want to be referred to, which is what we all want, you know, like if I, if you tell me that your name is, you know, Timothy and I say, okay, Bob, you got it. You're going to say like, what? I told you my name, my name was Tim, not Bob. And I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, Bob. Didn't mean to, I meant to call you Tim, Bob. Okay, Bob. And it's like, it's like, hold on. I told you my name was Tim. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just, it's not as complicated as people would have you believe. And I feel like, that helps. Once people know that, they people are like, oh, okay, this is actually pretty simple. And gender is different than sexuality. That's There's right. Yes. Topics. Yes. So sex is what you're assigned at birth. Sex has to do with, you know, your phenotype, your physical characteristics, things like that, which again is not binary, like male or female. There's lots of diversity in that. Um, I'm sorry, Cal. I'm sorry, Cal. I meant, I meant in terms of who you're attracted to. Yes. Yes. I was going to get there. Okay, so sorry. That, Cause there's a lot of confusion with those three words. So there's three words. There's, there's sex, there's gender and there's sexual orientation. So that's what sex is. Gender is all of the other stuff, which is like, you know, things that we learn, right? That like girls have long hair, boys have short hair, girls like pink, boys like blue, girls play with dolls. That's all like gendered things that we kind of create. And we get to decide for ourselves if we resonate, you know, if a little boy is like, I don't want to play with a truck. I want to play with a doll. It's like, it doesn't mean that that boy is a girl. It just means that he's a boy who likes to play with dolls because dolls don't have a gender. You know what I mean? And that's distinctly different from sexual orientation, which is, as you said, who you're attracted to. Sexual orientation, because a lot of people think, oh, gay and trans, same thing. No, gender is different from who you're attracted to, right? Like you may identify as a male and if your sexual orientation is heterosexual, then you're attracted to women, the opposite gender, right? But we also know that there's lots of men who are attracted to the same gender and they're homosexual, right? 
Um, so that, so who you're attracted to is completely separate and independent of your gender identity, because anyone of any gender can be attracted to any number of people. And it's just, again, sort of a personal thing for folks, how they identify. Yeah. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding and confusion because it can be a sensitive topic in some people's, yeah. uh, from their perspective. And they don't want to, like you said, they don't want to ask the wrong question. And so they don't ask the question and yeah. they're just kind of have to guess at what some of these terms might mean or what the relationship is. And I think having yeah. a chance to explain it, like you just did, you know, the, the more understanding folks have of it, I mean, it's the easier it is to, to kind of uh, put yourself in the other person's shoes. Exactly. Exactly. And like you said, demystifying it. So it doesn't seem so mm -hmm. scary and complicated. It, it really is much more simpler, simple than we would, we've been led to believe. Now, Cal, you mentioned uh, Forrest Gump earlier. Mm -hmm. Have you ever read the book Becoming Forest by Rob Pope? No. So Rob Pope is an Englishman. I think he was season four, episode one. I think we, I think we kicked off the season with him. Nice. He could, have, he could have been the the episode 50. He was one or the other. He was, he was either the mm -hmm. first or the last of the, of the season. But he recreated the Forrest Gump run. He Whoa. ran across America four and a half times. I have heard of this person. And he he took clues from the movie to try and dial in what the exact course was that Forrest took. Whoa. And he, re he recreated so cool. it as well as some of the dialogue, you know, when he first started running, then when he, he stopped gone. running. And the beautiful twist about this was when he stopped running, he, he gathered this, this crowd. People have found out about this. And so it was almost like the Forrest Gump movie. There's this group of, of folks, you know, with him. Right. And he planned yeah. it out that he he stopped and he says, you know, whatever it is, whatever the line is, you know, I, I, I'm tired of running. I think I'll go home. But then his his fiance met him out there where he stopped. It was all prearranged, oh. but she didn't know what was going to happen. He then got down on her knee and asked her to marry him in front of, you know, this 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 crowd of people that would have been running along with him. It was just a, oh. a really, really cool scene. That's amazing. That's so beautiful. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Very funny book. Very funny guy. Very entertaining. Listen, when you're on your run, if you're listening to a, a podcast, uh, find find the Rob Pope episode. From the I sure Pope will. Pope. That's yeah, awesome. Pretty, pretty good. Now you talked about a support team. It's not mm -hmm. just you and the dogs running across the country. You, you've got some no. folks who are are assisting you with this endeavor. Yeah, it's a little different than a hike. And it, I got to say, it's pretty nice. Um, it is a pretty small operation we've got over here. It's me and one support crew member who drives uh, my car and takes care of the dogs and meets me at various checkpoints. And, you know, usually we'll uh, have breakfast and lunch and dinner together. They're in charge of finding where we're going to sleep at night because unlike a trail, you can't just camp anywhere you want. Um, you have to, you know, find a place. And then I have my whole crew behind the scenes back home. That means people researching the organizations we're going to fundraise for, um, people helping work on the social media element of the run. Um, we have a web designer, an illustrator, and then we have our documentary film crew. And um, I think it's important to say that almost everyone on our team is also transgender. And that is really a testament to how, you know, people show up for each other when they belong to a community. And the whole message of the run is just, can we expand who, oh, Truman, hey, can we expand who we, no, can we expand who we include in our conception of community? And I think that's kind of, you know, the beauty of being in the outdoor community is that uh, everybody belongs outdoors and it's just, you know, making it feel more comfortable for, for everyone, more inclusive. Um, Cause that's how nature is. Nature doesn't discriminate. So why should we? Yeah. The trail doesn't care. That's one of my messages here on this mm -hmm. podcast. Hopefully that people get is I talked to a whole bunch of different people from different walks of life. They look different. The, you know, these people that the trail belongs to everybody, the outdoors belongs right. to everybody. And so, yes. um, 
just one person in a car with the dogs with you out there, that, that makes me nervous. It seems yeah. like, I mean, and, and it sounds like the car is not just trailing behind you at a, a, uh, at a slow pace, mm -hmm. the, a car is meeting you at different places. And so mm -hmm. you're out there on your own, completely on your own at times. Yes. Most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty vulnerable. It's a little scary. Um, I try to bring my big scary dog who you just heard barking with me. And, but, you know, I have had a couple of questionable encounters where nothing really happened, but I was a little um, alarmed by people, you know, pulling up alongside me, asking me questions. And I mean, it is a very vulnerable position to be in, in the middle of nowhere, no cell service, nothing like that. Um, I like to think that I give off pretty strong, don't fuck with me vibes uh, and people know not to mess with me, but you know, at the end of the day, I am taking a pretty big risk doing a lot of this. Um, it is definitely a lot more vulnerable and dangerous than hiking on a trail. I feel a lot safer in the woods than I do on the roads. That's for sure. Yeah. What, what kind of questions do they ask you when they pull up next to you? Just sort of like, what are you doing? Do you need a ride? And I'm like, I'm not getting in your car. What the hell? Like, you know, like, yeah, just sort of like, how far are you going? Stuff like that. But usually I'm, you know, I try to be friendly, but not too friendly. And people are like, oh, okay. And they just leave me alone. They they wonder if you're lost or if your car broke down. I don't know. I, I try not to look like a homeless hiker. I try to look pretty clean and put together so people know I'm on a mission. No, thank you. I don't need help. I'm good. Like... <laughs> And certainly having Truman helps. I don't worry about anything when my dog is with me because he's he's pretty he's a pretty formidable opponent. Now, L.A. to Phoenix, that's a, like it's like a six hour drive. Mm -hmm. and it's pretty desolate in, in, yeah. in spots. I mean, take us through what your day looks like out there. Yeah, it's not much different than through hiking. I pretty much wake up and start running and just run till I can't anymore. Um, I have been stopping for lunch and unlike hiking where I can eat and then walk, if I eat a big lunch and then I run, I usually get a stomach ache. So I'll, I'll take about two hours off in the peak heat in the middle of the day and um, then I'll, you know, have a plan to meet up with my crew member at the end of the day. Um, I've been pretty fortunate with cell service in a couple of patches. So I'm able to occupy myself by making phone calls to friends or listening to podcasts. Um, I'm a big fan of listening to music when I run, um, just because, you know, it keeps me energetic. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really just wake up, eat, run, lunch, run, and then fall asleep, do it all over tomorrow. Now, LA to Florida, what, what, what part of Florida? Tallahassee. Well, Tallah maybe Jackson though. Jacksonville, you said? Jacksonville, Jacksonville, yeah. Jacksonville, LA to Jacksonville. How many miles? I believe it should be somewhere around 26, 2700 miles. So about the length of a through hike. And how long are you planning on taking to do this? About four to five months. It might be longer just because we're stopping several times at various towns to do events and group runs. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see. We're going at a pretty good pace, but we go fast and then we take more time off in town. So um, that way we can do big community events and stuff. I hope those events go well. And that by the time you get to Tallahassee, you're almost like Forrest. You have this, this group of people running with you to, to Tallahassee. Yes. That'd be so cool. Yes, I certainly hope so. That's the, that's the dream. Now, is there a reason you, you chose LA to Florida and not like LA to New York or Oregon mm -hmm. to Virginia? I mean, what, why this route? Well, I certainly wanted to start in my hometown in Los Angeles. Uh, and then I chose to end in Florida just because partly because of the weather, because I'm starting early and I didn't want to go through anywhere really cold. I'm a Southern California kid. I don't really like the cold. Um, but then also because a lot of the states that I'm running through are the primary battleground states for this anti-trans legislation. And that's not because I'm out here 
trying to change anyone's mind or show up at, you know, the state capital or anything. That's because I think that in those states, the trans people that live there probably need more support and more love at a time like this. So I wanted to make sure that I'm rooting my run through the states where people who need access to these resources can get them and that I can help facilitate that. Fantastic. What, uh, when this is over, when you get to Tallahassee, what comes next? What's next on your radar? Well, I mean, at that point, we'll certainly have a lot of documentary film footage. So from there, it's probably going to be trying to get the documentary produced and put out. I mean, we have a really special team um, on our film crew and on our uh the production side of it as well. So sometimes that stuff takes a little while to get out into the world. So I'll be definitely prioritizing that, creating content, having, you know, more meetings and really optimizing the impact that this kind of project can have. Um, and then from, I mean, I really hope I'll just get kind of a year off for the first time before I go back to teaching. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to jump back into teaching. I kind of just want to chill out for a little while, but I seem to be very bad at doing that. And you said documentary film crew, are they following you out there or mm, as no, you're running or is there, is there a, is there a, a car driving by with, with a camera hanging out the window or are there drones? You know, I wish running? maybe if we get a big enough budget, we could do that. We could, you know, ha you know, buy people out of their actual work contracts but for now, they're just meeting me uh, in the big town. So my crew is flying into Phoenix tomorrow, staying for three days to cover the big events, and then they'll be flying back home and then probably meeting me somewhere in Texas next time. Um, so yeah, just meeting me for the key key parts. But I'm collecting a lot of footage along the way uh, with my running crew as well. Okay. I was just going to say, Cal, tell me there's some footage of you running through the desert. I mean, that has Absolutely. to make a documentary. That's, that's the, that's yes. the, the, that is the, the effort, the sweat, the, the yeah. misery. That's what grabs people's imagination. Well, I can, I can tell your viewers that the place to find that footage on demand is on YouTube because that's where the live vlogs are being posted along the way. Definitely a lot of talking head videos of me being like, I'm tired, I'm hungry, like this sucks, but a lot of really happy videos too. And just beautiful scenery. And for those who don't know, there's a super bloom this year uh, of wildflowers. So I'm really getting the best of that as well, which is very special. How has the weather been? I know there's been, I don't know, 15, 14, 15 atmospheric rivers pounding the west coast has any of that followed you on your run yeah yeah i've been lucky to stay right ahead of the rain but all of my family and friends in los angeles are just getting getting slammed with this rain so i'm kind of glad that i'm not there okay hey cal you know where we are where the pro tip insight of the week all right. What mistakes have you made out there that have translated into some wisdom for our listeners? What can you share with us? Hmm. Sorry, my dogs are fighting. Cooper, hey, hey, go get it. <laughs> um, hmm. I mean, certainly the sunscreen tip is important. Um, I guess my pro tip would be to work with your body, not against it. I think as athletes, sometimes we have these human limitations. Our body will have, you know, an ache or a pain and it's trying to tell us something. And then we condemn it. We're like, I'm going to hike through this pain or, you know, I don't need to listen to my body. I just need to be tougher or stronger. And that's how you get injured. That's how you get off trail. So it's really taken me a lifetime in athletics to reprogram my brain to not see my body as the enemy, but instead to see it as the beautiful vessel that allows me to do all these things and I have to take care of it. So, you know, I've spent a lot of time as an athlete fighting against my body. And on this run, I really learning to work with it instead of against it. Um, and when it has, you know, natural uh, messages it's trying to communicate to honor those instead of to be pissed about it you know like shit I'm I'm sore today I wanted to do this many miles it's like 
well, you're sore because your body's repairing itself. How about we just do less today and we'll do more tomorrow? You know, what's the rush? Um, so that definitely would be my tip. And that transfers into so many aspects of anybody's life. You know, listen, listen yeah. to your body, understand what it's telling you and make the, the required adjustments. That's right. Okay. So there you have it. That's it. This episode is just about in the books. Hope our listeners enjoyed our time with Cal and Truman and Cooper. I want to, want to thank them for joining us this week. Cal, yes. how can our listeners keep up with you on social media and where can they find updates on your latest adventures? I know you rattled off some, some sites. Do it one more time for us. Absolutely. Um, best places would definitely be the website, which is caldobs.com. The best way to support the run would be on Patreon. I'm on there as Cal Dobbs, or you can find me on Instagram at Cal underscore hikes. And I you feel free to message me, ask me any questions. Also doing vlogging on YouTube. I'm on a lot of platforms, but they're all slightly different content on each of them. So I would definitely encourage folks to check them all out. Um, but yeah, I mean, we really, we it's a low budget operation. So if anybody wants to support, I would say find me on Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Remember to check out the pod on social media as well. We are on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And if you have comments or clips you want to share, you can send it to me at johnfreakingmirror at gmail.com. The Adventure Media Recommendation. Cal, you remember this. This is where uh, I, I look to you to, to share with us some kind of movie, book, documentary, something to keep our listeners connected to the outdoors during the off season. What do you have for us? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, I would recommend the documentary uh changing the game it is a documentary let me get this wrong um it's a documentary from 2019 um that follows the lives of three high school athletes um and it's three transgender athletes um in three different states and sort of their experience being trans athletes um kind of before this wave of anti-trans legislation, but it really gets to know them um, as high schoolers, as athletes. They're all really great athletes. Um, they're all super lovable, super articulate young people. Um, it's on Hulu, I believe, called Changing the Game. And it's just such a pleasure to watch and, and follow their journeys. Really Fantastic. inspiring. Okay. Changing the Game. We'll have to check that out. Mm -hmm. What have we not asked you? And before we wrap things up, just one more segment called What Have I Not Asked You That You're Dying to Tell Us About? I think we pretty much covered everything. I feel like that was pretty thorough. And if there's anything that listeners didn't get to hear about, you know where to find me on all those different platforms. I would love to connect. Always happy to be a resource. How many miles did you run today? Today, zero. Happy to say zero. I am taking the day off. <laughs> first day in a long time i'll say that i need so it's it. okay it's okay to take a zero on a trans uh trans america run as well it's not only it's not only allowed but it's encouraged <laughs> <laughs> nice listen to your body that's right mm -hmm. well that's a wrap from the john freaky mirror studio any shout outs to friends and family cal oh i mean so many thank you so much to my incredible support team uh, thank you to the National Center for Trans Equality, which is really supporting this run. Um, thank you to so many organizations that are just doing the most, the most to support trans people. And as always, you know, thank you to all of the listeners and thank you to everybody who cares about making the outdoors a more loving, inclusive place to, to for all of us to coexist together. Well, Cal, congratulations to you. I want to wish you the very best of luck. Stay safe out there. And when the documentary gets made, I expect to have an advanced preview version of it. You got it. Okay. Well, thank you for tuning in. Always remember the trail is the trail. It doesn't care if you want to go downhill. It doesn't care if it's almost dark and you're looking for a campsite. It doesn't even care if you haven't put on enough sunscreen and your six moon designs running umbrella is in the car with your two dogs. The trail is the trail. Embrace the suck. Thank you.